I'm sure you've seen a lot of videos, especially TikTok videos or so all sorts of videos announcing the abundance of jobs in Canada. And a lot of them say, you don't even need degree. You don't need anything. You just get these jobs because the jobs are abundant. And if you're in Canada, sometimes you might be asking, oh, I'm here and I'm looking for the jobs, but I really can't find the jobs. So the question is, are there jobs in Canada? My answer is yes. Hi, thank you so much for stopping by. This is Sheyo Basi and you're welcome to my channel. Today, I want to talk about a very serious topic. It's about the job opportunities that are available to newcomers in Canada and how you can have access to those jobs. Now, if you're a newcomer in Canada or you're planning to come to Canada, you must be wondering, okay, are there jobs in Canada and how can I get those jobs? And I'm sure you've seen a lot of videos, especially TikTok videos or so, all sorts of videos announcing the abundance of jobs in Canada. And a lot of them say, you don't even need degree. You don't need anything. You just get these jobs because the jobs are abundant. And if you're in Canada, sometimes you might be asking, oh, I'm here and I'm looking for the jobs, but I really can't find the jobs. So the question is, are there jobs in Canada? My answer is yes. Now, another question that I would ask you is the jobs that you're looking for, are you qualified to get them? Are you aware of the kinds of jobs that are in high demand in the city where you live? Funny enough, in Canada, not all cities have the same jobs that are in demand. Some cities have maybe tech jobs in demand. Some people have um, nurses in demand. Some people even have administrative staff in demand. You need to find out what jobs are in demand in the city that you plan to come to or the city that you are in. The thing about getting jobs in Canada is that you have to be very, very strategic about it. Not only do you have to know the jobs that are in demand, you have to manage your expectations because when you're just landing, you might not get that dream job that you're looking for. It might take you a few months. You might be lucky enough that it takes you just a few weeks, but for many people, it will take a few months. You have to manage your expectations and know the jobs that are in demand, the jobs that you can get, the jobs you are qualified for, and how to go about it. So in this video, we're going to be revealing the raw truth about the job opportunities that are available for newcomers in Canada. You might be a newcomer as an international student, or you might be a newcomer as someone who has come as a permanent resident. It's still the same thing. The only difference is that international students might be looking for jobs on a part-time basis, which are basically student jobs, and permanent residents may be looking for full-time jobs. Of course, some permanent residents can start with part-time jobs and then slide into full-time jobs from there. Whichever one you are, these truths will be very valuable to you. So let's go. So before I bust your bubble, I want to let you know that Canadian employers like Canada work experience. And if you're just landing in Canada and looking for a job, you're like, how am I supposed to get this work experience if nobody will employ me? Yeah. Um, yes, that is a challenge, but they do like Canadian work experience and you have to get, try to get some Canadian work experience into your CV as soon as possible. Now, the jobs that you can easily get as a newcomer are in these industries that I'm going to call now. Number one is healthcare. Then there's hospitality, manufacturing, and transportation. Now, these are not the only industries where you can get jobs, but in these industries, you can easily get jobs quickly and fast as a newcomer. As you settle down and try to understand the job market, the jobs in demand and jobs that you can get that suit your particular work experience and qualifications. Let's start with healthcare. Canada has an aging population and there's lots of opportunities for healthcare workers, especially PSW workers. PSW means personal support worker. And these are people who actually work in healthcare to take care of um, the elderly. They can work in people's homes to care for um, the elderly or they can work in nursing homes or elderly homes where elderly care people are. A PSW in Ontario, where I live, can earn as high as $25 per hour of work and they usually have lots of hours to work. So there is no shortage of jobs for people who are PSWs. 
however before you launch into a psw course or you take up a psw job be sure that this is a job that you can do and this is a job that you have a passion for doing if you don't know how to take care of people or you don't have that spirit of taking care of people of enduring um, it might be difficult for you to do a job as a PSW because if you struggle with it or it pisses you off or you're just tired of the physical demands of the job you might not do very well in it so I advise you to find out what is required to do a PSW job and if this is something that you can do of course go for it now for you to get a job easily as a PSW there are certain certifications that you need to do in addition to your PSW training you need to get the first aid training which you can do through the Red Cross in Canada or if you have done this training before you can come with your certificate and you also need to get the CPR certification or CPR training if you are a nurse a foreign trained nurse and you come to Canada you might be able to get a job as a PSW or in the healthcare industry, but probably not as a nurse because you don't have that nursing certification um, from Canada. So if you're a nurse, you will take your time to do the, the NCLEX exam, which is going to certify you to be able to work as a nurse in Canada. Now, another thing about PSW is that if you have a car, yeah, you will get more job roles and you'll be able to get higher paid because sometimes you have PSWs who actually have to drive from house to house or from, you know, home to home to actually take care of people. And then there are some employers that will insist on you having a car in order to give you these higher roles. So if you're just coming from your country or you're planning to come, make sure you're coming with your driving extract as well as your um, driving license so that you can quickly do the driving test and get your driving license and be eligible to get more roles as a personal support worker. Another industry that you can get jobs fast and where jobs are, are available is the hospitality industry. So this is where you do jobs like event servers, bartenders, coach checkers, chefs, baristas, bossers, housekeepers, house cleaners, set up staff and things like that. And you usually you would usually be working for like events like weddings or working at a hotel or restaurant doing any of these roles that I've just mentioned. Now, in order for you to quickly get a job in this role and be accepted, you need to have certain certifications, and one of them is the Smart Serve certification. In order for you to serve or sell alcohol in Canada, you have to have that Smart Serve. Or in Ontario, but I believe in the entire Canada, you have to have that Smart Serve certificate. Um, it is actually a um, a training and an exam that you would have to do. It has different modules. It's a serious exam, um, so if you want to do it, you have to take your time to do it. It costs about forty five dollars or so. As at the time I did it, because I did it when I came, I wanted to you know work in a restaurant serving alcohol. So I mean, if you have that, then I mean you have an edge employers who want to take you on as a bartender or work in a restaurant where you serve alcohol or even sell alcohol in a store you would need to have the smart serve certification there's also the food handling certification if you're going to be working with food so if you're going to be a chef or someone who is a server serving food um, in a restaurant you would need to get that food handling certificate now you can do those certifications especially with food handling before you come to canada but I think that it's mass serve you need to do in Canada. Um, I would do another video, I don't want to get distracted, where I talk about where you can find jobs in the hospitality industry um, and also general labor jobs, certain apps that you can download on your phone and then you can get shifts for you, you to be able to do these this jobs. If you want me to do that video, please like this video and leave a comment. Yeah, I, I want to do videos that people want. So if this interests you, leave a comment in the comment box and say you want that video, uh, the one where that shows you the apps where you can get these hospitality jobs, then I will get uh, I will get to it and make the video for you. The third industry is manufacturing. Manufacturing has a lot of openings and sometimes it can be seasonal because it's the times when they're able to do, you know, jobs like construction and all that general labor. This is one industry that usually favors male, though females also can get opportunities in this industry, but there are lots and lots of opportunities. Now, some of the openings in the manufacturing industry include general labor, uh, maybe things like construction workers, 
crane operators, um, anything that involves um, manufacturing. Also, you could work in the factory um, as a line staff in the factory or just as a factory worker. And one thing about this industry is that the jobs might be a little bit physical, so they might involve a lot of lifting. Um, so, I mean, you need to be ready for that. Understand that this is what is involved in the manufacturing industry and um, the opportunities are actually there um, in the manufacturing industry. Now, I also want to state that construction is also a part of manufacturing. I want to uh, put it together with manufacturing. So construction jobs like maybe bricklayers, carpenters, plumbers um, are also very lucrative and the opportunities are a lot. I think that I dare say that the opportunities are even maybe more than those who are available to do the jobs, yeah, or more than those who are qualified and have the certifications to do the jobs. So if you are in that industry, construction industry, um, the jobs are usually seasonal, uh, probably during spring and summer, but there are lots of opportunities in manufacturing and they do pay um, a whole lot. I understand even to do bricklaying uh, pays a lot and you don't need to have any training to do something like bricklaying. So this will be suitable for maybe students who are here to study as international students. Maybe in the summer you can get these jobs when you have the opportunity to work full time and I mean get paid on a full time basis. The next industry that we'll be exploring is transportation. Transportation is another, another very big one. And this is one that you can start as early as possible, as soon as you land in Canada. Opportunities in the transportation industry include things like truck driving, which is very, very lucrative. And you can, you know, you can learn and get the certification to be a truck driver. Um, forklift, um, forklift drivers and crane drivers also very lucrative. And then there's Uber, like, yeah. So for Uber, you can get your own vehicle. You can buy your vehicle, a good vehicle that you can use for Uber. And then you can do Uber on the side. You can also do Uber Eats, um, which is just like delivering food to people who have um, ordered food from restaurants. And in addition to Uber Eats, you can do DoorDash. You can also do skip the dishes. All these are like food delivery services in Canada that require you to have a car and a driving license. So you see the importance of having the driving license. Not only can you use it in the healthcare industry for PSW, you can use it in the transportation industry. So don't forget to come with your driving license and registering for your knowledge test is one of the first things that I recommend that you do as soon as you land in Canada. There are people who get as much as $2,000 and above just driving Uber. Some of them just drive it on the side. Some people do it on weekends. Some people do it early in the mornings. Some people do it um, late at night. And then if you're in a city where um, there's a little bit of activity, yeah, Uber eats, Uber, DoorDash, Skip the Dishes will pay you really, really well. Trust me, it's well. Now, we've talked about those four, four major industries that I talked about, but I'm also going to talk about a few jobs that I think that you can easily get as well. One of them is customer service. There are lots of customer service companies in Canada that are looking for people who can take calls. So you take calls, you answer calls, sometimes can be incoming, can be outgoing for customers. So you need to learn the basics of the company so that when people are making these inquiries, you can make those calls. There is a huge turnover in that industry and they are always looking for people. Trust me, always looking for people. You don't need any degree to be able to do those jobs. Though if you have a degree, of course, you might have preference during the interview, but they train you to be able to do it. They train you on what to do. They give you like a one-month training before you start the job. So anyone can actually. There's also customer service in grocery stores. Um, so supermarkets, grocery stores like Walmart also have customer service staff. Um, so you can be a customer service. You can be cashier. You can be just one who is shelving, uh, putting, I mean, goods on the shelf. All of that is customer service and jobs like that are usually very available. You can find those jobs on indeed.ca or you can just go with your CV to these um, supermarkets and look for the manager. You can also apply on the websites of many of these companies, including Walmart, Best Buy and a whole lot of other stores like that. Another role that you can easily get 
is security jobs. Security jobs are easily available. The only thing is that you may need to stand for extended periods of time, but you will be trained. In most, in most cases, you don't need to have any previous security training. You're going to be trained for the job, yeah? And you just need to be able to stand for extended period, period of time. That's the only negative side. But if you don't mind, this is a job opportunity that you can explore. Now, this last one, but not the least, is getting a job in a restaurant. So places like Tim Hortons, McDonald's, where you go, you, you flip burgers, or you just work in the kitchen, their jobs are available. Now, the good thing, it's like a tip I'm giving you about working in these companies like Tim Horton and McDonald's, is that you can rise up to become a supervisor. Now, there are some of our brothers from another country, I'm not going to call the country, who are using this opportunity to become permanent residents. That supervisor job at Tim Horton's can easily qualify, easily qualify you for permanent residence because it's a knock B job, yeah? So don't look down on getting a job. I, I mean, in places like Tim Hortons, especially if you are a student, an international student who probably just graduated and trying to get permanent residence, these are opportunities, job opportunities that you should never, never look down on. Now that we've finished talking about all the job opportunities that are available for you as a newcomer or an international student, let's talk about the attitude you need to have and what you need to do to get these jobs. The first thing I want to say is that come with a plan. Yeah, don't ever come here without a plan. You've been listening to some of these videos. Have a plan before you come and then be patient. Like I've seen a lot of international students who just call me and say, you know what, I'm in here one month, I've not gotten a job yet. And I tell them you need to be patient. Yeah, I submitted lots of CVs before I got my first job as an international student. And let me tell you something. Sometimes I will go for interviews, especially at Walmart. And as I'm leaving and getting into the bus on my way home, I will get a refusal email. You can imagine how devastating that is. You have not even allowed me to get home. You are refusing me that day. It's like you plan to refuse me. Yeah, so I, I did get that. I did cry a lot you know, when I get those refusals, but I didn't stop trying. I continued to send in my CV until eventually I even got multiple job offers. So be patient, pace yourself and know that, you know, this time of trial, whatever time of trial you're going through will actually pass. So continue to tell yourself that these two will pass. Uh, one other thing about getting a job in Canada is that your network matters. Yeah. I've done a video before talking about um, how the importance of your network in Canada, I'm probably going to leave the link here or you can check my YouTube channel. You will see that video, the importance of having a network when it comes to getting a job, because there are some jobs that will not be posted though, especially if you're coming as a permanent resident or you're looking for a permanent role, some roles will not be posted. It is your network that are in that company or they are connected someone in that company that will actually tell you about the job. There are some HR managers or some departmental managers that do not have the strength to go through thousands of, you know, CVs. They would rather take someone on referral or they rather promote from within. That's why sometimes you're filling some forms. They would ask you, do you know someone in the company or did someone refer you? They will ask you to put their name and their number. So it's just easier for them to fish out those people that have referrals from the company and then you know just go ahead and ask you know this person can you refer them how are they and then they'll just take it from there rather than just you know fishing through hundreds and hundreds of resumes or cvs that people have sent so if you've gained value so far don't forget to leave a like and share don't forget to drop a comment if you want me to do that video talking about the apps the websites and how to manage getting a job in the hospitality industry so if you're a newcomer to canada or you're a new international student do not despair there are jobs in canada and when it comes to getting those professional specialized jobs the same principles that i've mentioned will also work for you your network being patient yeah just brush up your linkedin profile um, and don't forget to continue to tell people that you're looking for a job pray and expect the best okay expect the best canada indeed is a land of opportunities it might not look like that at the beginning. You might struggle a bit, but once you get your feet firmly on the ground and you understand the culture and you start having, you know, those Canada work experience in your CV, the more you work, the more you push out whatever work experience you brought from your home country until your CV has lots of Canadian work experience, which Canadian employers really, really like. Another thing I want to say as the last tip is that when you're doing these jobs, sometimes some people call them survival jobs, 
try not to get stuck there yeah don't forget that you probably have a career that you want to pursue and have that goal like don't get stuck in as a barista or whatever it's not a bad job but if that's not the career you want to build don't get stuck there and don't ignore business opportunities there are also business opportunities in canada you can become a business person yeah you're not just a career person you can even do business on the side don't ignore those business opportunities and i'm going to be talking about some of these business opportunities so the people that have head for business can actually look at them Thank you very much for staying with me. I don't want this video to get too long, uh, but I'm, I'm so glad that I've been able to make this video. And I hope that these opportunities will bless you and that you will share this video to bless someone else. The reason why I make these videos is that people can, you know, stop struggling, not struggle as much as I have done and others have done, but you have it a little bit easier to settle in Canada. So please like the video. It's going to help more people see it and also comment and share the video. It's going to help even more people see it. So thank you very much for staying with me till now. God bless you. And don't forget that it's not over until you say it's over and have a lovely rest of the day and lovely rest of the week. I'll talk to you in the next one.